Okay, this meeting of the Fox River Valley Public Library District Board of Trustees will be held without a quorum of trustees physically present, but is authorized by the Governor of Illinois pursuant to COVID-19 Executive Order Number 5, dated March 16th, 2020, a year ago today, and subsequent reissues, as well as the Governor's Emergency Administrative Act, dated June 12th, 2020. As board president, I have determined an in-person meeting is not prudent at this time due to the coronavirus pandemic that the governor has declared an emergency. I have also determined that it is not feasible due to the disaster and the disaster declaration to have a library trustee, the library director, or the library's attorney present at the library. A verbatim recording of this meeting will be made available to the public. Second announcement. Due to the current public health concerns and extension of the governor's stay at home mandate by Executive Order 2020-33 and subsequent reissues, this meeting is being conducted electronically. Anyone wishing to observe and or comment must email library board at Fox River Valley Public Library District dot info no, no later than 12 p.m. on Tuesday, March 16th, and will receive online access to the meeting. If you do not have electronic access and would like to make a public statement, you can call the library at 847 428 3661 before 5 p.m. on Tuesday. March 16th and leave a message indicating that you would like your message to be read into the record during the public comments section of the meeting. Each speaker will be allowed five minutes. A recording of this meeting will be available on the library's website by Friday, March 16th. Or, yeah, March 26th, I'm sorry. Okay, having said that, I would like to call to order the Fox River Valley Public Library District Board of Trustees meeting of March 16th, 2021 at 7.03 p.m. May we have our flag for the Pledge of Allegiance on the screen, please. Okay, everyone rise, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Okay, good evening, everyone. First order of business, of course, is our roll call. Uh, Nikki, could you call the roll, please? Dave. Dave does not look like he's present yet. No. Chris? Here. Mike? Present. Brian? Here. Nikki's here. Christina? Here. And Richard? Here. Thank you. Okay, the next item is public comment. The board recognizes its responsibility to provide an opportunity for anyone wishing to comment at any meeting to do so. Due to the current public health concerns, the March 16th, 2021 meeting will be conducted electronically. Any person viewing the meeting online and or wishing to comment will be accommodated in accordance with the public notice detailed above. The citizens will not be required, will not be requested to sign in to comment and each speaker will be allowed five minutes. Is there anyone uh, with us uh, electronically that would like to make a comment to the board? Hearing none, as, uh, do we have any telephone messages left for the, for the board? No. Uh, no, there is been none. none. Um, Okay, then uh, I think we'll move on to the president's report. Okay, well, welcome everybody to our uh, March 16th. As I mentioned earlier, it's one year today that the 
that the governor issued his uh, proclamation that kind of set everything upside down and we've lived through for a solid year now. Hard to believe. Um, we're pleased tonight to be joined by our two write-in candidates for the upcoming election. We have Marianne Della Maria and Matt Goike. Did I pronounce your name correctly, Matt? Matt, are you still? Uh, yes, you did. Yes, you did, Richard. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's start with Marianne. First, let me say thank you for offering your service to the library district and your willingness to serve on the board. Is there anything you'd like to tell the board about yourself or why you decided to move forward with your write-in candidacy? Uh, well, I just, uh, the libraries are very important to me and I feel if I can help in any way to improve anything or help with uh, suggestions, uh, I'm I'm here. <laughs> very good. Well, thank you very much for uh, being being our candidate. Richard, uh, I, I, I have a request of Marianne. I need some help. If she, oh. could, adjust, if she could adjust her camera a little bit so that we can see uh, your, whoever does your hair would be very happy because it's been featured. <laughs> Maybe Thank just you. back a little bit, Marianne, from okay. your screen. Well, well, the way it looks on mine, I my head and shoulders are in here, but no. You're, no. It's, you're better now. Oh, okay. Here. okay. Marianne, watch this. Hold on. Uh, where are you? And there's a bottom. There's bar. There. That's oh. you. Oh, okay. So well, either push your camera, push your screen back, or yeah. move your chair back. Well, I'm moving the camera. I mean, moving the that phone. That was good. Back That's it up. good. What, there? No, go back. Push it back a little bit. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I'm not getting an accurate look from my phone, but okay. That's better? Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, Matt, now it's your turn. Um, again, thank you for offering your service to the district and to uh, serving on the board. Is there anything you'd like to tell the board about yourself or uh, why you decided to move forward with the candidacy? Um, well, I uh, recently moved back to this area of the country um, and I've been here for about two years now. And when, when David... Uh, talked about the opportunity to serve on oh, the- Oh, Dave's here. So, sorry, Matt. Dave's here, but I don't know when he came. Right, David? Dave, yeah, you're here. about, about uh, three minutes ago. So. Okay. <clears throat> so call it 707. Sorry, Matt, go ahead. No worries, no worries, Nikki. So uh, when Dave, uh, uh, you know, talked about the opportunity to uh, to join the the board of trustees, I, I thought it would be a good way to to um, get involved in the community and give back a little bit. So um, that's that's why I'm here, and hopefully I can can be a service and help. Thank you very much. We uh, we look forward to both of you guys joining us at our May meeting, uh, the month after the election. Uh, second item of business: um, the economic interest statement. That should be coming out soon for continuing and for new trustees. Um, you know, in the past, we've always had questions about what is required of these questions uh, on the forms. So we've included in the packet a guide to help us in answering the questions on the economic uh, interest statements. So hopefully that'll help you uh, when you make fill this form out and be sure after you've completed the form uh, and you've submitted it to the county, you'll receive a receipt saying that you filed. Please make a copy of that and send it to Karen at the library for purposes of uh, keeping the records. Um, and that needs to be in. Karen, what's the date that that, that will have to be submitted by? 
The date is uh, about May 1st, I believe. Okay. Uh, most trustees will get that electronically. Uh, that should come out sometime this month. They'll have until May 1st to file electronically, and then they'll receive an electronic receipt that has filing numbers on it. And that you, email you can just forward to me at the library, and that's all we need for our records. For the new trustees uh, the, who are going to be joining the board, uh, you will, within five days of the completion of the canvas of votes after the April 6th election, which is expected to be about the 21st of uh, April, you have five business days, but you'll have to file a paper form. I sent you both an email that has those forms and instructions. You'll need to complete those forms and get them to the Kane County building in um, uh, Geneva. And uh, they'll what they'll do is you'll first file your economic interest statement. They will give you that stamped receipt for filing, and then you take that stamped receipt with the statement of candidacy and if you choose to file the uh, loyalty oath which is completely optional then they will um they'll take all three of those so the receipt they'll take the statement of candidacy and they'll take the loyalty oath if you find it so they will take all of those and uh they i would um I'd ask them for a copy of it just for your records. Uh, they may or may not give it to you. I don't know, but they do have it. So I don't anticipate a problem with that either way. And if you have any questions, please email me. I'm always available to answer them for you. Well, thank you, uh, Karen. You're welcome. Richard, I, I would just like to add, if I may, Karen, every time you send something out, you just make everything so easy. I so appreciated the fact that you, you gave us all that clarification in the board packet. You are amazing. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Appreciate that. Yeah, I second that motion. Thank you. Uh, okay, the last item I've got, the ILA and the trustee forum is hosting the annual trustee workshop this year, but this year uh, it's a virtual event. Uh, the event will be spread over the months of March, April and May. But a particular interest is the April 17th program, which will address the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it'll be presented at from 10 to 12, 10 a.m. to 12 on the 17th of April. So if any continuing trustee is interested in attending this program, please contact Roxanne at the library for registration. We'll get you registered and uh, as I said, it's a virtual event this year, but um, after the election, after the new trustees are sworn in, we'll have a, an orientation period with uh, each trustee going over a number of things, uh, one of which is educational opportunities for trustees that are provided through the Illinois Library Association. Uh, there are a number of events throughout the year, and we encourage uh, trustees to attend those if they're able to and they'd like to. Very informative and uh, well worth the time. And it, not only do you, do you learn some things about, you know, what it is to be a trustee, but you also get to uh, interact with other trustees. There are a number of trustees from all over the state at these things, and they're well worth the time. So we'll uh, we'll cover that when we get into the orientation after the May meeting. So with that, that completes the uh, president's report. And I'll turn it over to Roxanne for the director's report. Okay. Um, so in your in your packet, um, and I'll just review this quickly for the um, for our candidates um, as well. Um, we have a written director's report. Um, we have a document that's the department report. So each of our departments uh, submits a, a report monthly and we put those all together so that you get a kind of an idea of how the oper how the operation is running. Um, and it's also the department heads opportunity to brag a little bit about uh, their accomplishments and um, and sometimes we share uh, compliments with you that we've received from the public. Uh, then uh, there's also something we call our dashboard. 
and that's uh, let's see. Uh, you can basically see it here. It's on our website. There is a link on the website to the dashboard and it's a very interesting uh, interactive tool that gives a statistical view on how we're doing every month and uh, on an annual basis and there's opportunities in that tool to drill down and get additional uh, information than what you see when you first open it up. Uh, we put a printed copy in the packet, um, but again, the um, it's linked to the dashboard on our website, and um, we'll cover more cover that more in depth when we do our orientation. Um, are there any questions from existing trustees about the department reports, director's report, or the dashboard this month? Uh, Roxanne, this is Brian. I have a question. Um, yeah. at, at Randall Oaks with the uh, uh, the book drop that was damaged. Yes. Um, so I guess one is maybe if we have any update on like, I don't know if that's been fixed. It As of a week ago when I was out there, it wasn't. And the, the follow on question I had then is I was surprised that also the self-serve check-in thing was not being used because if we're trying to reduce the number of people in and out of there, it seems like somebody who's just coming to drop off books, if there's a way to have them drop off those books without walking right up by the, uh, you know, the, the checkout station or whatever, right out by the clerks might be something we'd want to do. Yeah, the, the book drop outside has not been, um, has not been fixed yet. We're still waiting uh, to hear a delivery timeline. Uh, the park district at first was trying, they thought that they could just replace the top and that the body of the drop would be fine. Um, and we were anticipating a pretty quick turnaround on them getting a new top shipped from California. Um, but apparently they discovered then that it would not work, um, that the body is too bent. And so um, it, it appears that they have, um, that they returned the top and have now are in the process of reordering an entire unit. Um, the only reason we know that is because they've been asking us for information about uh, logo, um, you know, and have been working with Kirsten on getting artwork to go on to the new book drop. We don't have a delivery estimate at this point. Um, I'm just hoping that by the time we hit the April meeting, we'll have it, you know, it'll be done. Once it, once it ships, um, it's about uh, five to 10 days in shipping. And, uh, and then once they get it, it's pretty easy to install, so. Okay. And what um, about the not using this, not using the self-check-in, <laughs> not using the self-check-in uh, down the lower level of the rec center, what's the reason behind that? Right, that's because we're still having to quarantine items. And if we're using the self-check, it checks them in automatically. And then it, they appear to be on the shelf and available. Um, so it, you know, we've got the self-check um, at the main library shut down as well. Um, once Rails lifts the quarantine, um then we'll be able to put those back into back into function so okay thank you mm -hmm. anything else yeah I, um this is uh dave um, yeah carrie had mentioned something about the ccs i l l Tech group. Uh, what, what is ILL? And uh, in, ILL is interlibrary loan, and right. CC, CCS is um, that's our computer consortium. Okay. So it, interlibrary loan is the process of getting a book that it comes from outside our consortium. Okay. I believe I'm trying to remember. Was there a particular? Let's see. Uh, she said um, 
Oh, that she had gone to the technical group? Yeah, and then while there was the beginning of a feature, still not ready to be fully patron driven and CCS actually recommends against fully utilizing. I, I just was wondering if that's a, what kind of a. Yeah, I, I, I believe it has to do with um, what we call mediated holds. Um, versus patron placed holds. Huh, okay. um, Carrie, are you here? I am, yeah. Can, can you give us a little bit of background on that? So this was right around when I joined three years ago. Um, CCS has been looking into integrating um, OCLC requests into the online catalogs for patrons. So that's like what Roxanne is saying. If any of our CCS libraries don't have it, patrons would be able to just request this from a library out of state or one that's just not in our consortium. Um, and three years later, it's just still not ready. Um, Mieko at CCS just let us know that they are a little bit closer than they were, but because of how inconsistent, I guess would be the word, the results are for patrons and then the back end work that has to be done with staff. Um, it's just still not recommended to utilize that feature at this time. I see. So in other words, someone might request something and it might or might not show up. Um, and uh, requires a lot of uh, manual follow up in order to make it happen. If I yeah, if I remember correctly, it's th the format it's always one blanket format. So even if it's like a CD or a DVD, it shows up as a book to the staff working on it. And it just ends up being more work for staff to actually request that item than if a patron just would have emailed us and said, can you get this for me? Okay. And can okay. you get me the audiobook version of this? Exactly. Yeah. Title? I see. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just had two things. Um, one, there are a lot of really creative, fun looking programming this month. And just that jumped out at me. I feel like maybe incorrectly, but I felt like there seemed to be a lot this month. So that was great. Um, and then, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like judging from the dashboard, we're really starting to recover a bit would that be a wrong assumption or i think that's i think that's an accurate reflection of what we're starting to see as we reopen you know it was february 8th when we reopened to the public and began bringing back our um our last um, furloughed staff, you know, getting back up to full staff. I think that's a reflection, uh, you know, with the, the thinking about the programming too. Um, and we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and it's feeling pretty good. Good. Uh, patrons are coming in and, um, you know, just really pleased to see staff faces that they haven't seen in a while. Because uh, even when we were doing curbside, they were seeing very few staff faces. So while we haven't been overloaded by any means in terms of or overcrowded at all, um, we are seeing patrons trickling back, and um, yeah, you know, it's 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 energizing for everyone. Good, yeah, yeah. The numbers really seem to bear that out, so that's yeah. good. Yes, we're still seeing though a lot of uh, home deliveries. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think we were just a little bit surprised that that was, um, that that was sustaining. So who knows, once we get back to full, our intention is to keep the home delivery as a service, as an available service. Um, and so I think that may have a potential for having our circulation um, go higher than it has even before COVID um, because 
will have, uh, you know, be able to get things out to people who weren't able to come to the library. I tell you, I can speak to that uh, as family, who, we, we get lots of home deliveries, but we were at a point where so much of what we were checking out were just things we requested on hold and we would literally walk into the library, just grab the books off the shelf and go. And so this just saves that trip. And I mean, we love it. So I, I mean, I hope it's it's here to stay. And to me, it seems like a really amazing benefit we're providing for, for our community. So I I think it's one, one of the really good things to come out of this. You know, if, if we come out of it better than we were, we came into it, this could be one example. So. I wanted to ask, uh, first of all, I want to know if I can check out the STEM pack kits because I think they look amazing. They just, uh, I, I love it. I I love to see that I, that we are addressing that and um, having been a classroom teacher, often uh, science and math and those kinds of things kind of go by the wayside with kids. And I think that you guys have found an excellent avenue to keep that alive. So I really love the STEM kits that you're putting together. Um, I wondered if there's a reason why our uh, free meals seem to be going down. Is that because some of the kids are back in school uh, and getting lunch at school? Or, or do you know? I don't. Anybody on management team have a sense of that? Yeah. So. That's a good question. Um, so what happened during February was that it was it was very cold. <laughs> it was very cold and we stopped doing curbside. So we think folks didn't want to come in and get out of their cars because it was very it was cold. It was cold to come out. But um, we've seen people come in. So our number should be better for um, March. Okay, so we think it was just I, I a just temporary. Wondered, and th this is just me, and I haven't gotten any feedback from anybody, but um, I just wondered whether we're doing a uh, good enough job about getting that message out that they're still available and it's not just like they're available in the summer. I, I don't have a real feel for that. It was just a question. I, and please don't take it that I'm being critical. I, it's just a question. Yeah, sure. We could look into maybe putting more web um, blasts, but that's a good point. Thanks, Chris. Any other comments or questions? If not, we are. Oh, I, I wanted to add just one thing um, related to the director's report. Um, the first item about the um, CARES Act grant. Um, you know, we're really pleased to see we were able to maximize that um, and uh, just ended up receiving about $1,600 less than the initial allocation because we spent less um, than we had anticipated and requested in the grant. So we were only eligible to get reimbursed for our actual expenses. Uh, we, I am keeping a really close eye out now with the uh, next COVID relief package passing. I understand that there was about $500 million allocated to libraries um, in that package. So um, I will, I would expect to see some, um, some additional funding available for um, mitigation things. We spent some money on uh, air filters on um, internal room size air filters um, after the initial, you know, they weren't anticipated um, in the initial grant application. And um, so that would be something that I would hope we would be eligible to re be reimbursed for or apply for reimbursement for, um, you know, as we're looking at uh, expanding computer access again, um, we're likely to be wanting to add some additional plexiglass so that we can um, make all of the computers available and have, um, you know, have some put up some barriers between them for patrons. Um, so there are some additional things that we will do if we um, 
you know, as we move forward and hopefully we'll be able to get reimbursement on those as well. Um, but I just wanted you all to know that we're, that I'm keeping a close eye on that. So um, that's all I've got, Richard. Okay, then let's move on to the consent agenda. Before I ask for a, uh, a motion to approve the consent agenda, are there any items any trustee would like left off for individual consideration? Hearing none, I'll ask them for a motion to approve the consent agenda items A1A through A1J. May I have such a motion, please? Mike Tennis, so I'll move. Chris Evans, second. Mike motioned and Chris seconded. Uh, as usual, there's no discussion on consent agenda. Can we have a, a roll call vote, please? Dave. Yes. Chris. Yes. Mike. Yes. Brian. Yes. Nikki. Yes. Christina. Yes. Richard. Yes. Okay, moving on to unfinished business. Exhibit 1B, director search. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the director's search brochure as presented and to authorize promotional expenditures associated with the search up to a maximum of $2,500. May I have such motion, please? So moved. It's Brian. Brian, second, please. Nikki will second. Nikki seconded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as you know, Christina has been uh taking the lead on the director search uh, preparations the creation of the brochure uh and uh, those kinds of things so i'd like to call upon christina to give us an update and to uh, uh tell us where, where we go from here all right um so i sent everyone a compilation of the feedback that I received on the contents of the brochure. And I just wanted to make sure that I give ample time for discussion on that. Um, the, there was a bit of the feedback that was incorporated into the brochure. For example, the last page of the brochure was changed completely, almost completely, to take out the timeline and um, clean up and tighten up the language a bit. Um, I wasn't sure that shortening it would be in our best interest. I, I think that the length of the brochure is good as is. Um, I think the content is good as is. And I'm hoping that you guys will approve the brochure as it is in this final draft. Um, Just real quick. If, yeah. Uh, if since we took the timeline off that the very first page, the selection process and timeline needs to be changed. Oh, good catch, Nikki. Thank you. Yes, I and I want to echo what you said. I like the length. I don't think it should be shortened. I like the content that's in here. Um, and I was actually shocked at how much feedback you did get on it because I thought this was just a, hey, we're going to look at it but it was in the, I didn't think this was a, one of those things that we had to be, we were going to be looking at so closely because it was within you and Chris to, to you know, and Roxanne to put together. So I think you've done a tremendous job on, on this and it was well thought out. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I, but, obviously want to give as as much space and respect to the feedback that we did get 
but but yeah, the the content we were thoughtful yes. in the decisions that we made. So um, so if if anyone is curious about the rationale behind the decisions that we that I made in the brochure, please, I am more than willing to to talk those out. Uh, Mike Tennis here, just to uh, help clarify. Um, I was rather verbose in terms of feedback <laughs> because uh, I, my first thought was that the uh, proposed brochure really was targeting a national audience uh, that um, people that had no idea what the Fox River Valley Library District is or what it's like living in the area or even in northern Illinois. And so um, uh, I really believe the target audience so should be the greater metro Chicago area. The seven counties with, uh, around Chicago is where we are most likely to identify uh, qualified candidates that would be interested. And so rather than just saying, uh, I think it should be Chicago Metro focus rather than national, I went to the trouble of trying to spell out uh, what could be done to have more of a uh, uh, area focus. So I guess I saw that I didn't know that was you in, in the comments and that made me actually very puzzled because I believe Roxanne, didn't you come from Florida? And and I think somewhere else I read that m most candidates are probably nationwide be come nationally because of how we're how the Illinois the libraries are ranked or something like that. So that made me like I knew Roxanne came from Florida found through a director search. So that surprised me that someone would think that it should be narrowly focused. I think we need to cast a wider net to be able to find somebody is, is where I was thinking. So I'm I'm not arguing with it. I'm just was curious as to why you were thinking we should narrow it. Not knowing that and it was, that really right. was the um, that really does speak to the rationale behind that first page um, in that Yes, our previous director was from out of state and we are, I think, perhaps likely to attract local candidates, but we're not unlikely to attract national candidates either. And I, I don't I don't see the benefit in narrowing our search. We can only benefit from widening our search. I also feel um, that uh, although we are likely to pull from local, um, we're a small area and there are people in, in surrounding counties, when I say I'm from West Dundee, have no clue where West Dundee is. And so I feel Although we weren't trying to narrow it, I do feel like it's really good for us. I mean, when I read what Kirsten put together on those first couple of pages, it was like, wow, I want to live there. You know, I want to be there. And Kirsten, you did a fabulous job. So we we sang your praises at our at, when, when we all got together and looked at it. So, um, but I I do think we are a small enough community, even though we're a large library, we're a small enough community that people don't know who we are and where we are. So that was another thought that we had in our process of letting people know what the community has to offer and the multiple communities have to offer. I can offer, I can offer a, a couple of thoughts too, and that is, you know, in addition to the fact that I, I came up here from move. I moved back to the area from Florida. 
I had family here. And, and I've heard that same uh, story over and over from other library director peers that had left the area and came back. Um, there's uh, the Grays Lake Library has a gal who is living in Florida, but she has family or in, in California. And she moved back to the area um, after being gone for many, 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 many years. Um, and when I've spoken with some of the, uh, you know, two of the companies that do uh, searches in our area, two, two uh, search firms that we might have considered hiring, um, you know, both have uh, told me about, you know, a number of, um, you know, candidates that they've placed in local libraries um, that have come from out of state. We've even we've even had managers apply for library for jobs at our library from out of state um, during my tenure in the library. So um, and it doesn't always involve um, a lot of expense. If they're wanting to come, they're wanting to come. <laughs> And they're looking for an opportunity to do that. And it may not be exactly that they may not be familiar with our neighborhood, um, with our township, um, but they're familiar with Chicago or they have friends or family here or they went to school here. Um, so this is a way to attract them and, and get them to look at us. Anyone else? Uh, to me, this brochure tells a story. It, it, it tells a story of, of how our library fits within our community and how the director, potential director, fits within our library. It just brings everything together uh, and, 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 and relates our culture and and what we expect of a future uh, director. And to me, uh, each one of those elements is necessary if we're gonna have that complete picture and that complete story. And I think, uh, uh, Christina, you did a wonderful job of writing that story and bringing all the essential elements together. Uh, that uh, I, think a lot amazing document. I think it's a pretty amazing document. I think one other thing to keep in mind is since it's not going to be printed, it doesn't matter how many pages it is. I right. would completely agree. We would, you know, depending on cost, we would want to shorten it if we were printing this physically. There would definitely be value in making it less pages. But I think with the fact that it's digital, it doesn't matter how many pages either. I like the story that it tells because we do really want someone who's community minded, not just to come here for a job. It's to come here for a community and a lifestyle and, a, you know, all well, that. And it I, speaks to our priorities, doesn't it? I, for example, the fact that within it, we talk about kindness and inclusion. It shows that those things are important to us. Right. And that we're going to be drawn to candidates who find that important too. So I think that's the the kind of implicit messaging in the presentation of the thing is important. I had one question, not necessarily on the, the content of the brochure itself, uh, but where we laid out uh, potential costs and it talked about more, you know, getting them posted with different uh, different sites and different places rather yeah. than any printing costs. Do you think, could there be like events like Richard even brought up like the ILA workshop where it may make sense to print some and see if we would be able to, you know, have some available for Bill? I'm just thinking like, Lauren was previously a trustee, right? Before she became library director, wasn't that kind of how she? So I don't know. I mean, I just think like people who sort of travel in these circles, if there are places where it may make sense to print some of them and, and be see if we could, you know, if they had any spots where, where stuff like that would be, you know, available for people. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, by the time those people, we, we are together, I'm not, I'm teasing. Like the, by the time the, 
hopefully we have somebody in place before the point where we actually can be together and could distribute brochure. <laughs> right. That's, that be, no, that, that be, that's true. Maybe timing wise. Right. We, we already have, good, good point. But yeah, one of the things I've noticed at these conferences and workshops, one of the topics of conversation is uh, what is on the ILA and ALA uh, job boards, incidentally. They're very attuned to uh, to those websites, and so I don't think we're going to miss a bit uh, a bet by uh, being on those. As far as the the Illinois uh, people that might be interested, for sure. Potentially, if something came up and you don't have somebody, because I won't be on the board anymore, um, and let's say there is some event. Print up a one sheeter that says, "For more information, go here." But here's the highlights because people throw yeah. those away, so you don't want to spend a lot of money. Yeah, and print. good point. So, yeah, but hopefully you won't have to do that. You'll have somebody soon because of this amazing brochure that was a team effort. And you know, <laughs> I, I would just like to add um, that. Uh, and dovetail with what Christina said, we we paid very careful attention to the surveys that that the board, the management, and the staff submitted to us, and we we literally made a Christina made a huge spreadsheet of every single comment that was made by you guys and by the staff and by the management. And then we made sure that those comments were all incorporated somewhere in that brochure because we not only did we want the board to be pleased with the presentation, but we wanted the staff and management at the library to realize that we are listening to everything that they have to say and how important their input was to us. And um, I wanted you guys to know that that's where we drew from. We didn't just pull this off of online. We got ideas from online. We got samples from online, and then we made it our own uh, when we were looking at ideal candidate positions and things like that. We we really felt that we wanted everybody who was a stakeholder to feel like they were heard in this. Very good. Any other comments on the brochure? Um, we just had a couple of other things that we wanted to bring up. I have a list, sorry. So moving forward, the goal is to get this posted, get the posting with the link to the brochure posted on these various sites like this week. Um, we do have a timeline. We took it off the brochure, but we do have a timeline in mind. And according to that timeline, we're thinking that um, Chris and I and Roxanne can do the initial screening based on a screening rubric that Chris did an amazing job on. Um, we took all of the survey results, the job description, and Chris was able to turn those into kind of screening questions and interview questions. Um, so screening and initial or and final interview questions so that our interviewing and screening rubrics are aligned to our survey results and the position and everything. Um, so based on that and based on the uh, as objective as possible pr process that we have laid out and that we have in mind, we're thinking that we can do the initial screening, um, the initial screening interviews, and we'll do those over Zoom. Um, and we're thinking we'll get the candidate pool down to between three and five candidates sure. to bring to the board for final interviews and to do those 
and we would do those final interviews together as a board. Um, and if anyone wanted to discuss that, we're thinking those are going to have to be in person. We'll want them to tour the building and we'll want to be in person for those final interviews. Um, so if anyone has any thoughts on that, you know, because as soon as we get this posted and out there, the process is off and running. So we want to kind of get some of those conversations out of the way now. Um, and then if anyone has questions about our sample illustrative promotional expense budget, um, feel free to ask those questions as well. Yeah, Christina, could you just kind of go over how you see the expenditures, uh, let's say the first 30 days and maybe the second 30 days. Which which of these would you go for first or would you go for all of them at the same time? So um, all of the main ones, all at the same time we're thinking. So ILA, ALA, Rails, uh, the Iowa State Library, um, the Wisconsin Library Association, those those main like industry specific ones we would do all at once and all right away. Um, you can post for 30 days or for 60 days, but we're thinking we'll do two 30 day postings rather than one 60 day posting so that, you know, it gets gets in there fresh at the top of the the search results and so that the posting doesn't go stale, so to speak. Um, you'll notice that the kind of HR industry job sites are much more expensive. Indeed and LinkedIn are much more expensive. Um, and so our thought is we'll try going with a free LinkedIn post to start where it'll just be shared through network networking and you know our own professional networks and Roxanne's professional networks and hopefully the staff and management's professional networks and if it gets out there in the free LinkedIn posting that way first then we'll be able to see whether we even need to go with the paid LinkedIn posting. Chris told me that Nikki has some experience with LinkedIn and my um, perception of it is that it's kind of daunting and it it seemed from Nikki from your experience that that might be correct, huh? Um, a little daunting, but can be expensive. LinkedIn is you pay by the click. Um, and it's very focused, like it's great targeting. This is what I do for a living. This is my job is it's called paid search and or paid advertising, um, but it's expensive. The clicks are eight, 10, 12, $14 each. So definitely start with the free. Yeah, do what you can with the free and then. But the nice thing is if you do decide to go with doing something with the paid version, you can be very specific. So it's not like throwing a net out there and like going, I don't know what I'm going to get. You're going to you can be very specific. So OK, but try definitely try. Free. But Four yeah, seconds. we'll try for the free LinkedIn posting first um, and after a few weeks. We'll see whether we really feel like we need to go with the with Indeed and LinkedIn or not, but we we'd like to have that option there and available to us off the bat. Without having to come back to the board. For more money, right? And I, I can mention too that this that this twenty five hundred dollars is um, within the existing uh, board budget line uh, in the month in uh, that you can see in your monthly financial statement. Um, board has an annual uh, budget line of 
um, with three thousand dollars in it and typically it's for workshops and and that sort of thing and there's very been very little of that this year um and what there has been has been very inexpensive with no travel costs because they've all been electronic um so you know there's it's not like we're pulling um from uh, undesignated funds. These are funds that are already set aside for the board's use. Anyone else on yeah. either the brochure or the uh, the budget? Hearing none, I think it's time that we uh, took a vote. So again, it, the motion is to approve the brochure and also to approve the promotional expenditures associated with the search up to a maximum of $2,500. Nikki, can we have a roll call vote, please? Dave. Yes. Chris. Yes. Mike. Yes. Brian. Yes. Nikki is yes. Christina. Yes. Richard. Yes. Okay. Um, get back to my... That actually concludes the business for tonight. Another short meeting. Um, since there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. May I have such a motion? So move. Second, second, please. Chris seconded. May we have a roll call vote, please? Dave. Yes. Chris. Yes. Mike. Yes. Brian. Yes. Nikki is yes. Christina. Yes. Richard. Yes. We are adjourned. I have uh, 7.57 p.m. Okay.